Well, welcome to the next section of our readings from John James Taylor's narrative of his visit to Transylvania in 1868. He's about to set off to visit the home of John Paget, an Englishman resident in Transylvania, in fact a very significant figure in Anglo-Hungarian relations at the time and himself a Unitarian educated at Manchester College York and it's something of a, of a relief and a joy for them to find their way to his home and to uh, have a rest there for a short while. But we'll carry on with our story. About three we set off in an open carriage for Geresh, the country seat of Mr Paget, well known to the public by his excellent work on Hungary and Transylvania, accompanied by the bishop's son, who had recently been appointed to some government office in Pest. We drove through the straggling gypsy suburb of Klausenberg and ascended the long hill which commands from its brow a magnificent view of the town and its adjacent scenery. The broad vale in which it stands with the encircling hills and in the far distance north and east the dim ridge of the Carpathians. The country through which we passed on our way to Geresh was bold and varied but somewhat bare with a character which I think the French word apre would well describe. Anything but commonplace, not wholly unlike the somewhat brusque and independent bearing of its inhabitants. A striking contrast to the rich, luxuriant meadows, the tall hedgerows, the slow, winding streams and soft, swelling, turf-clad hills, the blooming and garden-like appearance of southern England. We reached our place of destination when it was getting dusk and were welcomed by Mr Paget at the door with that frank and cordial courtesy which set us at once at our ease and made us feel at home. He introduced us to his wife, belonging to one of the most ancient families in the country, born Baroness Wesselenyi, a name of distinguished mark in the annals of Hungary and Transylvania. Madame Paget speaks English readily, is well versed in the literature of modern Europe and is herself an authoress. She proved to us the best of friends and a most sedulously attentive hostess. I cannot indeed too strongly express my grateful sense of the considerate kindness and generous hospitality of these excellent people. Without them under a climate so peculiar and amidst Manners so different from our own, our visit to Transylvania might have been far less agreeable and satisfactory than it was. We had, moreover, beside the enjoyment of English comforts and the facility of intercourse in our own tongue, an opportunity of seeing something of the interior arrangements and mode of living in a Hungarian gentleman's country house. For Mr Paget, through long residence, his warm sympathy with the Hungarian struggle for freedom, in which he was himself a sufferer, and the connections of his marriage, is now completely identified with the native aristocracy, shares in their feelings and is interested in their objects. He belongs emphatically to the constitutional as opposed to the extreme democratic party. Deek is with him the fitting representative and expression of true Hungarian policy. Yet with all this, Mr Paget retains the warmest love and reverence for England and continues firmly attached to his early principles and convictions. It was delightful to hear him talk in that remote land of old York days and call up with affectionate interest the names of former tutors and fellow students. We rested for a day quietly at Geresh before the festivities commenced at Torda. In the interval, Mr Paget drove us over to his farm and vineyard at some distance from his home. He is exerting, I was informed, a very beneficial influence on the whole system of rural economy, introducing an improved breed of cattle and paying particular attention to the cultivation of the vine, which he looks to as a great source of future wealth to Hungary. 
He has imported the finest vines from France and Germany and planted them in various parts of his estate, carefully labelled as to origin and date, and placed under the superintendence of an experienced vincer from Switzerland, with a view to notice the effect of climate, soil and culture on the produce. In conjunction with some native gentlemen, he has formed an association for the improvement of vine culture and laid out a model vineyard in the neighbourhood of Klausenberg. The wine from his own estate, which we drank at his table, had a singularly pure flavour, as if not medicated with brandy and other ingredients by which wines are cooked for our market. On the afternoon of Saturday the 29th of August, there was to be a public entrance of the bishop into Torda, with a procession. We intended to be present and join in the reception, but from being misinformed as to the time, we arrived at Torda when it was all over. The afternoon unfortunately was wet, but the little town was all astir, gay with flags and planted fir trees in the direction of the church and parties were pouring into it from all sides in their curious old-fashioned wagon, drawn by two or four horses to be ready for the festivities of the ensuing day. Every house, I was told, was full. It was an exuberant overflow of universal hospitality. Mr Paget succeeded in procuring a room for us in case of need at the post office. And we'll continue with John James Taylor's experiences in Torda in our next reading.